comers in the room tonight. Yay! Take on the light has come. Take on a God is for us. We stand in the Savior's love. The only love that will last forever. Take on the light has come. Take on a God is for us. We stand in the Savior's love. By your love and freedom, here we stand, lifted hands unto the King. Every day, giving thanks, bringing I everything to the one deserving all the praise that our hearts could ever sing. Here we go! Oh, you are amazing.
Okay, we're going to do a song. Alex is going to help us sing. Alex and our daughter Madison Grace is going to sing. Are y'all ready for motivation? Y'all ready? Let's do this. Here we go. Alex. Jesus, when I call your name, I feel you drawing nearer, Jesus, and you will never change, your love remains forever, Jesus, in you I live in You're the reason that I live. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive in you. No one else, no one else, no one else will do. You're the one, you're the one I am running to. I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive in you. No one else, no one else, no one else will do. third time to be here this year trying to figure out when I can come back before the end of the year so get a good you know once a quarter visit in I love coming to this house I didn't know what I was getting into when I met the Bagwells and uh, I all of us have just fallen in love and uh, we are so excited every time we get to come back so last time we were here a few months ago three months ago or so uh, we brought our oldest son Denver Cole and today we brought our daughter Madison Grace 
You just heard her sing. She's recorded several projects uh, uh, that we've done at Covenant, the last couple she sang on, uh, and that being one of the songs. Have you all done that song here before? Motivation? Motivation? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, all right, you all have done Motivation before. So, um, but Gracie, we just, uh, this in the last year, Gracie signed uh, a recording and a, and a writing contract with Integrity Music. They said, we believe she is the voice for the next generation. And... Um, She started writing music when she was nine years old, and probably even before that, there are things that she doesn't want you to hear, but like a real authentic song that got, really got her in, uh, in, in the doors at Disney, and they were just interested in her music, and when Gracie was about 12 or 13, she was like, I just think I just want to do worship, and at 12, she started singing with Alex, mm -hmm. right on the, on the, uh, you're... Maybe like 10. 10? Yeah. 10, okay. Yeah. All right, 10. You started... Okay, we, all right, Eleven. she's, I'm, I'm corrected, okay. Cowboys lost, and you're right, uh, 10. Uh, and so, so anyway, I'm just excited to see what Gracie's doing and the songs she's writing, and there's one particular song that was just released, and it's, it's just one single, and it's only available on digital. You can get it on iTunes. In fact, if you go right now to iTunes, it's on, you can go right there on your phone, but you probably shouldn't do it during church, or you can sneak around and, like, s search. Madison, now I understand. Uh, we, I've all, all her life, we've called her Gracie. Her name is Madison Grace. We've called her Gracie. And we only call her Madison when she's in trouble. But Integrity decided they wanted to use her first name, and they've actually removed the vowels to make it really artsy and cool. So it's M-D-S-N, Madison without the vowels. You get it? So if you're searching, it's M-D-S-N. And the name of the song is Kerosene. Would you like to hear that song? Now, uh... What's really cool, God's just opened up these doors for her. Uh, last week, we got word that they just, she, she did a video with this song. It's, you can watch it on YouTube or it's on Facebook. You can follow her on Facebook. But uh, uh, they, they, this video just went into 2,000 gyms across America. So my little girl is singing while people are running on the treadmills at gyms everywhere. It's actually next month, it's going into... Uh, 900 Foot Locker stores, this video. So there's just all this stuff opening up for her. And we're going to sing that song for you right now. Are you well, ready? Correction, well, we're not going to sing it. We're not going to sing let it. her sing it. We're going to, yeah. okay. Are you ready, Grace? <laughs> sure. So uh, let's do this. Here we go. Kara sing. So fast with you, it's unstoppable. This looks crazy. How could I hide it? Taking me over, drawing me closer. You are every hope and dream is going in me. You light me up like a receiver. There's no way that I could hide a love so bright. You light me up like a receiver. Feeling ignited, willingly overcome. This looks crazy. How could I hide it? Taking me over, jump me close. You are every heart and dream to spark in me. You light me up like a receiver. There's no way that I could hide a love so bright. You light me up like a receiver. See 
Why don't you sit down for a second? I want to read something to you. Just, can I just do a little exhortation? I wrote a, a little piece uh, for a, a blog on our website um, about giving thanks, why we do what we do. And Dave, if you want to play behind me back there, you can. Um, so I'm just going to read this and share a little bit. I remember as a preteen being challenged by my mother to memorize scripture. It was something that the whole family participated in. Maybe I should define what I mean by challenged. Here's how it went down. You kids have one week to memorize this chapter. If you succeed, you all get $5 a piece. If you don't, you get a whipping. <laughs> Spoken in the Texan drawl, you know, whooping. I don't know how you spell whooping, whipping, whooping, however you say it, right? I want you all to know that I was never concerned with the whooping. <laughs> I was excited about the $5. And I got it every time. Every time. So that's how the Word of God became a part of my daily life. One of the first chapters we were assigned to learn was Psalms 100. And I can still quote it today. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Now music was always a part of my life. I started playing the piano when I was five years old. I always sang with my brothers and my sisters, so reading phrases like come before his presence with singing drew me in. But the word Thanksgiving, um, let me read, I'll just continue reading. Even when I didn't understand his presence, I knew a lot about singing. We sang at church, we sang at home. I remember singing in the backyard and the swing in my backyard. But the term Thanksgiving was a holiday in November, just a few weeks before Christmas. I didn't understand what was being said. I had visions of pilgrims and turkeys. So memorizing this passage was just a way for me to get my $5. I had no idea that it would become the blueprint of my life. I would soon learn that Thanksgiving was much more than a holiday. As a teenager, the concept started taking shape as I began to discover the art of worship, an idea that would grow into a lifestyle and completely consume my life. Come before his presence with singing. If I wanted anything, it was his presence and singing could get me there. But before I could find him, I had to find the gate or the entrance. I would discover that a thankful heart would open the door, then I could sing my way right into his arms. In the same passage of scripture, the message translation, it says it like this. On your feet now, applaud God. Bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourselves into his presence. Know this. God is God, and God, God. He made us, we didn't make him, we're his people, his well-tended sheep. Enter with the password, thank you. Make yourselves at home talking praise. Thank him, worship him. For God is sheer beauty, all generous in love, loyal always and ever. Being thankful will press open the gate. It'll take you from the natural to the supernatural. I was determined to give thanks until I became thanks. The Apostle Paul said, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 
I hear people ask me all the time, how can I discover the will of God for my life? What am I supposed to be? Who am I? What is the will of God for me? I want to stress to you that you can learn to hear the voice of God and get clarity on specific direction. But until you're able to do that, find his will in his word. Paul said it so well, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. If you're lost and can't find direction, you can still start somewhere. Give thanks. Start by saying thank you when someone opens the door. Say thanks to your family and friends when they compliment or give you a gift. Be grateful. Of course, we can always be thankful for the cross, for his shed blood. It takes thanksgiving to get in the door, but it's only by his blood that we are received. So give thanks. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he gave thanks. He modeled for us how to be thankful even in our darkest hour. In the context of betrayal, he gave thanks. Thanksgiving is not a gem until it comes out of the pressure of our pain. Maybe you feel betrayed by someone. Maybe you feel betrayed by God for not giving you the answer you desired. Give thanks in everything. Give thanks. Even in the dark place, give thanks. Give thanks until you become thanks. Thankful people attract breakthrough. So give thanks. Every answer to every question in life can be found in his presence, but you can't even get close to him without a thankful heart. So give thanks. So God, here we are in this room on Sunday night in a place where we're accustomed to your presence, but we know that your principles are solid and true and sometimes we go through the motions and not even realize that it's only because of your word and, and, and the plan that you've given us that we can enter into your presence. We can come before your presence with singing. Tonight is a night of worship designed to come before you with song. So here we are with surrendered hearts. And we just ask for you to breathe on us. Lord, do something supernatural in the room. Yes. We ask it in the wonderful name of Jesus. Now, are you ready to go further? Let's everybody stand. And before we do, I got to go do this. Daddy's home, so <laughs> you ready? Let's do this. Let's sing all things. Here we go. I'm so grateful for the promise in Romans 8 28 that says, He is able to work all things together for the good of those who love Him, who are called according to His purpose. Anybody love Jesus in the room tonight? This heavy room was never mine to bear, so I cast my cares upon you, Lord. This weary room I've traveled for so long, would you take my hand and lead me on? You are working all things for my good. You are working all things for my good. When I cannot see it, God, I still believe it. You are working all things for my good. Oh, oh, oh. When Filled with tears, 
trust you with my life, God. You're working it out for me. You're working it out for me. Yes, you are. Yes, you are.
sing this. Jehovah Rapha, God my healer, you are here. Jehovah Rapha, God my healer, you are here. Yes, you are. Say that with me.
I can take just a moment and play a melody. Because I understand this is not just an instrument, it's also my weapon. Just like David played before the king. Darkness ran away, ran away. I can gather here tonight and play a melody. And darkness runs away, darkness runs away.
you just right out of your own spirit lift up a song to him in the room lift it up lift it up lift it up a song of praise to our king come on lift up your voice oh god we worship you
Come on, why don't you just push a little bit more? I want to feel it. I want to feel your worship. Let's push a little bit more. right now and sing out a new song to the one on the throne. Lift it up, lift it high, let it rise to the heavens. Sing it out, sing it out. Surely the Lord is here, here in this place, here in this place. Surely the Lord is here, here in this place, as we worship. Wandering heart, 
searching for promise fast asleep under the stars had a dream the heavens were
I can see the face of God. Behold him. Behold him.
Victory is mine. The battle is yours. The victory is mine. The battle is yours. The victory is mine. So I will stand still. And see your glory. The battle is yours. The victory is mine. The battle is yours. The victory is mine. So I will stand still. See your glory. Yes, I will stand still. See your victory. Ah. Yes, I will stand still. See your glory. I will stand still. You've won it all.
When I was a child, they used to sing a song at the close. Didn't even get it at the time. All the ladies with the hair built high up on their head would sing, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. So about a year ago, I picked it up. Started singing that song again. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise him all creatures here below. We were invited to sing along. Praise Father, Son, and Holy So now I love the ancient melodies, even though I'm not singing one right now. Pick up the old words, the old language, and bring them to a new generation and sing it again, sing it again. Dig old wells and dig some new ones and See what God might do when we all come together, when we build a bridge and can all come together. The young and old, the rich and poor, will see the face of God. So it's 744. I don't know how long we're supposed to go, but I at least have this one more song to sing, if that's okay. Yeah. And I'm sure Pastor Tim is gonna come right after that and we'll have a few things to say. You didn't go to that chord. So, I love this old song. It was written back in the 1600s, this, these four lines, and then we wrote this other verse to go with it. And we've sung it here before. There's a breaking. There's a shifting. God, you're doing something in Colorado. The wind of God is blowing again. Yeah. 
There's a shifting Oh yeah In my direction There's a Somebody give God some praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There's a breaking in my favor. Oh, yeah. Help me, there's a shifting in my direction, in your direction. In our direction, yes, to a breaking in my favor as I pray. I got on a plane yesterday morning. I flew to Louisville. I was with Pastor Ronnie Joe Harrison on Saturday night, preached twice this morning. But God spoke a word to me as they celebrated their eighth anniversary. And Samuel went to the house. Samuel went to the house of Jesse. And Jesse brought out seven sons. And the Lord said, none of these are the one. Do you not have any more sons? He said, well, I have the one out in the field. I have David out there. He was the eighth son. 
And God began to deal with me about this because naturally, as you know, eight is the number of new beginnings. And the Lord just spoke to me. He said, I am raising up the voice of the eighth son. I am raising up the voice that will usher in a new dispensation in the church. Because whether you understand it or not historically, the day Samuel poured the oil on David's head was the day of the closure of one season and the activation of a new season. Just, just hang in here with me because I'm going to give you a full dose of this next Sunday. But what God showed me is David was able to kill the bear and kill the lion within himself. He had enough of what it took in his skills, in his tenacity, in his determination to kill the lion and to kill the bear but he'd never faced anything like Goliath. But as the oil dripped down David's brow, God was anointing him to go to the battlefield and slay the greatest adversary Israel ever faced. Now I want you to hear me. So the son of the new beginning was different than Saul because Saul was a king because he looked like a king. He was tall like a king. But David was anointed and truly anointed to be king. And I just begin to declare this over the church in Louisville, how their church was like the voice of the eighth son. But Gracie, I looked at you tonight and the Lord said, you tell her. I gave her all the skills and I gave her all the talents and I gave her all the abilities to slay the lion and to slay the bear. But the oil of the anointing that you have grown up under will cause this little girl, excuse me, to be a giant killer. And you may think me strange, which you would not be the first, but I saw the oil glistening in your hair, and I saw God sending you forth to battle. Oh, I wish you could have heard Pastor Gala's message on the Iser. Because there is an Iser inside of you. There is a warrior inside of you. And the Lord said, you're going to be put into circumstances and situations that your talents will take you to great places. But I have called you to slay giants. And I am going to take your hand saith the Lord and I will cause them to be put upon the brows of your generation and as I brought David out of the field as a teenager virtually the same age as you I caused his hair to glisten with the golden oil of Samuel's vial and I sent him that as Goliath ranted on his 40th day, I sent David on the 40th day to slay the adversary of Israel. You shall slay giants, little one. You shall slay Goliaths for your generation. For they are hungry for more than what the world thinks they're hungry for. And I will place my hand on your brow, saith God. And I will quicken your mind. And that unique anointing and that unique gifting that is deeply resident in you shall gush forth. 
as the songwriter said, spring up, O well, and the well shall explode with a revelation of the greatness of God, and you shall sing, and as you sing, yokes shall be destroyed because you are a daughter of heritage, and I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Joseph, and multi-generational anointing is springing up in you. O oh, little one, you shall be a giant killer, saith the Lord. Somebody praise God.